Hello everyone and welcome to Rondell's Unpopular Opinion Podcast and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here sipping the Kool-Aid like I always say, welcome to the channel and be sure to not only give this video a thumbs up to get it recommended, but make sure that you leave a comment and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with the notification bell hit y'all. So today has been one of the most saddest days in a long, long time, um, we all have learned of the news of Kobe and Gianna Bryant and seven others actually perishing in a helicopter crash this morning. Today is January the 26th, 2020, and I actually covered it through my Spreaker podcast, and I did share those Spreaker podcasts here on YouTube. Now, in the midst of the news breaking, right, which was very much so a shock, we had TMZ, we had CNN. And then we had news reports circulating all over the internet, all over um, as far as television. And MSNBC was one of the platforms that was trying to get the breaking news story out and cover what exactly took place. Now, in the midst of them doing that, they decided to have their media correspondent, Allison Morris, actually do this. Now... I'm going to play a clip of Allison Morris corresponding with, I don't know who it is, and honestly, I'm going to keep it all the way funky. I really don't give a F-U-C-K who she's talking to, but um, that's not really important. So just listen to this clip, and you basically determine what you think that she said when she described Kobe Bryant. You couldn't deny how much he brought to the team, no matter which team, uh, which Lakers team he played on. Yeah, it seems like he was just the kind of athlete, the kind of star that was perfectly cast on the Los Angeles Lakers, Los Angeles Lakers. Kavita, if I could ask you to stay with us. Perfectly cast on the Los Angeles Lakers, Los Angeles Lakers. Kavita, if I could ask you to stay with us. On the Los Angeles Lakers, Los Angeles Lakers, on the Los Angeles Lakers. You guys pretty much heard what Allison Morris said. And I'm going to keep it all the way real. All right. I heard a hard G and a hard R in that enunciation. I did not hear knackers, okay? Because that's what, you know, a lot of people on Twitter were, you know, saying underneath the comments. Because, you know, Allison did go and try to do damage control via Twitter. And of course, in her midst of doing damage control, she had people who were basically, you know, caping for her and basically saying that she was saying the word knackers. All right. So I'm going to say this now when I went to see because I already knew that she was going to do some type of damage control via social media. Right. And I did look up an Allison Morris. Okay. And the initial Allison Morris that I found was actually ironically was in media however she was in media in ireland and a lot of people went to her uh twitter page coming at her over the kobe bryant incident and she had to basically put out basically a psa letting people know that i am not that allison morris i actually am in ireland i do not work or correspond with msnbc so a lot of people were flocking to the wrong allison morris and sending her all types of craziness but this is actually the real allison morris here in the states and as you can see her Insta her twitter name is actually allison morris now all right allison spelled with one l and she basically stated in a tweet which sparked over uh 50 8300 retweets and 53 3.8 thousand likes okay and she basically stated earlier today while reporting on the tragic news of kobe bryant's passing i unfortunately stuttered on air combining the names of the knicks and the lakers to say knackers Please, I did not and would never, in capital letters, use a racist term. I apologize for the confusion this has caused. So that is her damage control that she is doing right now. She tweeted that about three hours ago. And she basically wanted people to know that that's not what she said. Now, if Allison knew, 
okay because she's supposed to be a journalist the prerequisite of journalism is to know your stuff is to basically research to fact check to give receipts to have receipts and then know what you're talking about before you go and you basically spin a narrative to the world right because the world is literally watching you so what she should have realized was that maybe i was ignorant in not knowing about Kobe Bryant because everybody knows that Kobe Bryant had a 20-year career with the Lakers. And even if you didn't know how many years that he did play for the Lakers, you knew that he spent his... Basically, you knew that he spent time in L.A. playing for the Lakers. Like, that is like... I mean, girl, you could have found that on Wikipedia in 2.5 seconds with a Google search on your smartphone. I don't understand how you could mess that up and where you get the, the Lakers or where you get the New York Knicks tied in with Kobe Bryant. Like, how? how And make that make sense. Now, I believe Kobe Bryant did play his last game, um, one of his last games, uh, where he scored the 61 points, right, in his um, retiring game. I believe that that was against the Knicks in L.A. He played in L.A. But that's what she probably read. She didn't really know much about Kobe Bryant because she wouldn't have even thought of the New York Knicks coming to mind. And then the person that she's talking to um, or corresponding with who called in or phoned in, she's basically stating that how he contributed to all the, the teams, all the Lakers teams. And I'm like, girl, what? Girl, what? There's only one Lakers team in the National Basketball Association. Yes, there are other teams within um, the state of California for the National Basketball Association, right? You got the LA Clippers. You have the Los Angeles Lakers. You have the Golden State Warriors. I, like, honestly, like, I don't understand. Like, I'm just not understanding how such a huge platform can get it so wrong when it's so many resources to get it right. It just doesn't make no sense. And comes to think of it, he didn't, in the, in the uh, final game where he actually um, scored the 60 points, he was playing Utah. So the, the Lakers were playing Utah. So again, I'm just not following where the New York Knicks came into play. This is completely just irresponsible, negligent on Allison's part, MSNBC's part. And since you said what the F you said, all right, I heard it as you know what, all right? And I, I didn't hear knackers. I heard a hard G and it is what it is. And you knew you messed up. She knew she messed up because if you listen to her speech afterwards, when she was talking, when she was speaking, and after she knew she slipped up, she started talking faster than a used car salesman on the lot, all right? So I'm not, I'm really not. You were negligent. You were irresponsible with your platform. You slipped up, okay? The pillow talk that you do at night or the living room conversations that you have and the, the rhetoric that you use and the language that you speak at home just slipped up. And it's really, really sad because even in death, you know, you, we just cannot be respected. We just really can't. And it's sad. This man just literally lost his life with his daughter and his friends and her friends all aboard a helicopter that crashed. Their bodies aren't even cold yet, and here comes the disrespect. You know, it's just it's it's just really really ridiculous. And the crazy part is, is when I was watching the live stream from ABC's YouTube channel and looking at the comments that were in. I'm not even gonna even show y'all the comments that were being uh, stated in the live stream as it was being live streamed that all the fans were pulling up to the Staples Center. All right, with flowers and everything. If you guys could see the comments that were being left in the chat, in the live stream chat, it was just crazy along the lines of burning in hell and he got what he deserved and all this crazy shit. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And now we got this 
where now we have media correspondents literally calling us what they really probably really think of us. It just is really sad. And then, you know, you go and you have these conversations with people who really try to stay politically correct or live in a bubble or act like, you know, this world is full of just cupcakes and rainbows and they just don't see color and they don't see racism and they don't see these, you know, things and they don't see the social bias. And it's just ridiculous. It is blatant and it is in your face. And this situation definitely much so proved that so if anybody is sitting here thinking that black folks overreact all right that black folks just take things way too serious and you heard that you heard what she said i i mean it's just i have no words i really really have no words it's just it, it's crazy and msnbc definitely definitely needs to fire Allison, like straight up. If they don't fire Allison, it's just going to be more um, scrutiny for them. And people are literally going to be keeping their foot on their neck until they do. So they might as well just can her while they can. All right. So she can go and she can plead her case all she wants. I'm pretty sure she done pleaded her case to her boss after that segment went off and went and did damage control via social media. OK, but the best thing in, in the the organizational interest is to can her. And I believe that they are. Drop down in the comments and let me know what you guys think of this. Do you guys think that she really said knackers or she said the other word, all right, that I can't say because I'm not trying to get no community strikes on my channel. But do you think that she said what we thinking that she said, or did she really say the word knackers? And do you think that MSNBC is going to hold her accountable for what she did? Drop down in the comments and let me know. Thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast, and I will check y'all on the next one. Peace.